Hi, everyone. Harry here to talk about the guilty verdict on all 34 counts of Donald Trump, former defendant, presumed innocent until proven guilty, now proven guilty and a convict. Technically, under New York law, the convict label sort of kicks in when he's sentenced. That'll be July 11th, but I think it's fair to call him that now. All right, let's, I'll do a little bit on the evidence, I guess, because, um, you know, it's, it's a part of what happened today. So, um, remember the, uh, things they had asked for. We talked about that earlier today, and I think it turns out to have been correct that they were already zeroing in on Trump. Trump's credibility generally, for instance, that he lied about Karen McDougal and likely lied about everything. But more importantly, the phone call with David Pecker, where uh, Trump said Michael Cohen will handle this, and the meeting on uh, in Trump Tower in 2015, August, um, where Trump said, uh, you know, they all agree together that um, it's they're, they're going to do this plot to help the campaign. And that's the basic charge, just to reiterate what the jury found. They found that all these 34 pieces of paper were false. And of course, they were false. Uh, as I mentioned before, it was ludicrous to argue otherwise and try to suggest, as the defense did, that, oh, he really was getting paid $42,000 a month, which Trump was just signing summarily without thinking about it for legal services. He was never performing. Uh, and that they were done with the intent of furthering another crime, that crime being to promote Trump's candidacy. It was all about the candidacy and salvaging uh, what seemed like an existential crisis uh, through unlawful means. And the unlawful means, the, the judge decided not to give what's called a special verdict, an interesting choice. We could have had all 12 jurors say, you know, I think it was this unlawful means. I think it was that. There were three choices put before them. I think the main one that the DA um, really was pushing was an, a violation of federal election law uh, and that Michael Cohen's payment uh, payoff for, because it was to benefit the campaign was an unlawful campaign contribution as that's defined. And it really was. Remember, Michael Cohen actually pleaded guilty to it. And uh, Pecker's company, uh, American Media, entered into a non-prosecution agreement about it. So that is what they found a little bit simpler than they were worried it might have to be. So I think in retrospect, they were made very strong progress last night. And they wanted to know a little bit more about inferences and what they could do. The they had a big chunk, not quite all of it, but uh, about a half of the um, instructions read back to them because you're not allowed to have them in New York. So they just had to hear them. And then those four pieces of testimony that I think, you know, I surmised yesterday and I think accurately in retrospect really were focused on Trump. Um, okay. Uh, so 34 counts, it seemed to me, this is a fairly quick, not, not lightning, uh, fast verdict, but fairly quick. And certainly when we learned there was a verdict at the end of the day, in a sort of funny way, we were told the jury was going for the day. And then a few minutes later, all of a sudden there was a verdict. So obviously they were very close. Um, and I think the time just came when they were going to leave, but they pushed through to, you know, be done with the, they were obviously, you know, just had to do a few things to stitch it up. They did. And they came out. Um, I, uh, just so you know, was, was summoned to rush up to, um, 30, uh, rock. So I was not in the room, but I have a pretty good idea what it was like. They filed in. Trump uh, immediately to all appearances stopped having the kind of oh, bravado that he had when he walked in and, and maybe he thought it was just a question uh, and just w one after the other, after the other, after the other, guilty, 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 and 34 times. And after the first, uh, after the first two, 
it was pretty clear they were going to run the table because the first two were slightly different and that Trump hadn't signed the check if they were looking to somehow give him a pass on a couple of things. But otherwise, it was you know clear, evident pretty soon that this was going to be the result. Trump comes out after the verdict, calls it all rigged, fulminates about the judge, and basically it's somehow Biden's DOJ that has done this whole thing. Uh, and the real date's going to be November 5th, the election. And look, that is going to be the real date. It always was going to be the real date. It remains in the power of this country to fundamentally reject the judgment that was very uh, solidly based in evidence that Donald Trump's a felon. There is a lot of indication we have in polls and the like that they will, uh, that the people will be influenced by this fundamental fact. You know, you have a criminal felon running for um, president on 34 counts. It's always been within the power. Yesterday was in the power. Today it isn't within the power. But it's a, um, you know, I, the word I used and I stand by is majestic. The, the you know, legal system really held. And this is notwithstanding the real pressure put on the jurors and the judge from everywhere with Trump screaming about this and not just Trump, senior political leaders coming up to New York to assail the decision all in Trump kind of clone where and make it seem like it was all a sham and the like. And the jury just kept its head down listened to the evidence, rendered a verdict. Um, I was just uh, on TV talking with other commentators and a lot are, you know, pressing the point. Now we have a real job to do to see, you know, will the American people accept the verdict? Yes, I understand that. But, you know, that's always the case, uh, in including controversial verdicts. Would the American people accept the verdict? of the Rosenbergs, of, say, uh, you know, Patty Hearst, of the January 6th um, uh, felons and the, you know, Ruby Ridge, many things. There's popular opinion out there and they could reject it. And there's even a calamitous, um, you know, chain of events where they basically vote this newly crowned felon into the Oval Office again. Uh, for him to wreak the kind of havoc on the Constitution that he has promised to do. But for today, the Constitution prevailed, and it held under considerable pressure. There's been a lot of accolades justified to the jury and to the judge, the judge in particular, cool-headed, firm, but with a light enough touch. All that is true. But what permitted him, you know, what to have the force that made Donald Trump sit the fuck down during this trial and have to be here and really be subject to the judgment of his peers under the Constitution was the law. It, it's the robe. Uh, Merchan, for all his talents, if he were just uh, trying to make things happen, same with the jurors, Trump would uh, thumb his nose and walk out. But he didn't and he couldn't. And so, you know, I was just really struck this a little maybe misty eyed and goobery, but um, the rule of law, it prevailed and the republic held and prevailed under really considerable pressure. Um, you know, you can think about countries, less mature countries in which a, a um, trial against a former leader um, who all the time, along with all his or her followers, were, you know, screaming and saying it's all rigged and the like, where things would have eroded and there would have been, you know, all kinds of reasons to question. And here in the well-established system, you know, it, I, I'm just struck by the kind of contrast, a sort of beautiful juxtaposition of the majesty of the rule of law and the kind of homeliness of the Manhattan courtroom where the where the law prevailed. Um, things worked like clockwork, notwithstanding all kinds of barometric pressure um, in the other direction. So, um, 
I, I find this day, you know, we've been holding our breath for a long time and hoping and waiting for the cavalry to arrive in the form of the rule of law. It doesn't overnight transform this country into, you know, save the country from so many of the things we are worried about. But it, you know, it strikes a really important blow for our institutions and the rule of law. Yes, ultimately, it's the people in the democratic process who will decide. But in the meantime, a big part of it is our system for um, judging what people have done. And when it's a criminal uh, allegation, giving all kinds of protections and all kinds of due process. And Donald Trump got every every drop of that and um, was judged guilty, as he should have been, it seemed to me. I, you know, look, if this had been a hung jury, I said this yesterday, you know, unanimity is part of the process, too, and quirks and things happen, but that's part of the design. But, the, you know, this is, a, I think, a, an eminently fair verdict, consistent with the evidence, and just more generally, you know, this is the way we drew it up in this country, and God damn it, it happened the way it's supposed to, and that's notwithstanding the terrific pressure the system's been under for years at the hands of basically of this one defendant. And, you know, in its majesty, um, the law prevailed. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.